jumping right in here. Are we ready to? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, um, I'm sitting here with Mr. Bolelo Bikwani, who is the, the chairperson of the council at CPUT, and he also chairs the the organization of all the chairs of our university or tertiary institutions in, in South Africa. It's really an honor to have some time with you. Mr. Bikwani, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. And um, we'd love to hear from your heart, your wisdom and counsel um, to our, our leaders who are on our universities across the nation today, uh, wrestling with these issues of the fees must fall, what are the solutions? What do we do now? What do we do next year? What's the way forward? And I'd love maybe just to start off just to speak from your heart as the, the chair of the CPUT Council. What, what would you say needs to be done as students once again are asking not just for a 0% fee increase for next year, but also for a way to be made for there to be free education in South Africa? Um, Pastor Gareth, I, I think one of the first, um, I don't want to say problems that, that strikes me, is we, we seem to be a bit late. We, we seem to have woke up um, too late in terms of wanting to engage the students. And then I, I'm, I'm very much aware, as, as you know my responsibility and, and the position I hold, I'm very much aware that there are interventions that come from all corners, including from government, in terms of the commission and so on. But I think the level of engagement is what is late. I personally would have thought by now that universities would have had engagements, serious engagements with students around these issues. And I must be quick and hasty to say there could be some universities that say, but we have had those engagements. But these engagements should have been engagements that were making sure that we don't get to where we were last year, where our campuses are going to be um, really parking spaces for fire brigades where um, students decide to bend down the very universities that they want to build. Uh, it's, it's a dichotomy, it's a, sure. it's, a, it's, a, it's a serious thing that one wouldn't understand that the struggle of students is a struggle to build universities but they bend the very universities that they want to build. I accept and understand they are angry, I accept and understand. They believe that's the language that must be heard. But that language is unsustainable for all of us. For all of us, we are all in this. And if we cannot be patient with each other, we cannot be open with each other, we, we are going to all sink. If students decide to ban universities, where is the next generation going to study? There will be no universities. There will be no universities. So I think the first port of call for university leadership, if I were uh, um, really um, part of the day-to-day -day leadership, would have been to invite a mediator, for instance, up front, even before there are disputes, to invite a top-level mediator to come and assist us to find each other. If this is not happening at various companies, I mean various campuses, it's happening at national level, I would invite a mediator that would nationally uh, mediate and facilitate dialogue, meaningful dialogue, besides the presentations that are made to the Commission. Okay. But meaningful dialogue about a number of things that I believe those who are involved in this need to agree on. Because it is disagreement or perceived disagreement
that leads to us moving different directions and those different directions including include fire uh, within our universities. Okay. Just looking past the current pressure for should there shouldn't be a fee increase, do you think free education for all people in South Africa is a viable option? I, I am one and one of the many people who, who support free education for poor people. Now poor will have to be defined at the, at the right time. Um, but when I, I, I come from a poor background, I know what it means not to have money to pay for your fees at university. I had to go around with my begging cap, asking for money from different people who were throwing 500 rands, 200 rands, 1,000 rands until I'm able to pay my fees because my parents could not afford it. So I believe the, the most noble gesture a country can do for its own children is to give them free education, in particular those that are poor. In particular, those that are poor. I believe, I don't think there's much debate about that because I know uh, the minister has just recently said himself, I can't remember, just, just recently, it's either yesterday or this morning, that the government does not have a problem with free education. But definitely, there are steps that may have to be taken to get to that point. Now, are the students patient enough? For, for us to, to really detail those steps and, and be, be committed to walk that journey towards free education and students see from us that we do indeed have commitment. So personally, I believe free education is the most noble goal that any country can have for its poor people. What is your counsel to, to people who might be a part of the Fees Must Fall movement or, or wanting to know, do we get involved? How do we support the, the cry for these things when, say, the, the, the commission that has been set up to, to consider the feasibility of it? Should they engage that process? Is that process going to lead to a viable um, solutions? Um, the, there are some very clever people who see a process even before it's completed that it's not going to get to viable um, solutions but but that is not that is not the attitude that we would want in terms of trying to advance our country forward there is yes a commission i believe the commission may have its own weaknesses or areas of improvement from other people who have seen it, who, who may even decide not to participate, which I believe I've read that there are um, some student formations who have decided they are not going to engage the, the commission. That, that is very unfortunate. That is very unfortunate because whatever recommendations are going to be made, they are going to be recommendations made less the contribution of those who did not participate. And we have not resolved the problem. Let's talk about the current feeling that the, the protest action is going to be taking place as the Minister makes the announcement about, and maybe Chan Vice Chancellor make the announcement about fee increases for next year. Um, what's your advice um, to both sides, the student side plus the university leadership side? Um, if students engage in peaceful protest to la let the voice of, of the poor of our country be escalated, the lack of access to good education as that voice needs to be escalated. Um, what's your advice to both sides? I'm sure pro protest, especially peaceful protests, protest is a constitutional right in the country. And therefore, if students want to get into protest, as long as the protest is, protest is within um, the constitutional framework and it is peaceful, that protest for something like free education for poor definitely will be supported. I don't think that we 
we will be doing the this noble cause any good by by really adopting extremes when we are dealing with issues i mean you, you don't resolve issues by adopting extremes because right. it will take time for you to get closer to each other and probably if you get closer to each other you may get closer to each other when no one is left because you have killed each other in the process so we we need to be reasonable enough and we need to be trusting enough and the others must be trustworthy towards the other so that the issue of trust can can be a factor in this process because that, that is one of the factors where uh, people want things now it's because there is an element i i guess a, an element of lack of trust between the parties um, there could have been promises made in the past that were not kept around issues of um, education but that does not lend itself to violence and to protests that are damaging in property sure it doesn't lend it to that it still it still requires us to to adopt a very matured um, outlook on things and a matured um, attitude towards the engagements that we, we we must be robust in our engagements we must take each other apart but in engagements with robust debate and dialogue. Absolutely, yeah, okay. absolutely. And what's your advice to university leadership when they want to call in police and react, possibly even in a, in a violent way, to peaceful protest? I, I have no doubt that um, university leadership, including my own university, um, normally face situations that are very serious when the student starts the violent protest. I have no doubt that in some cases there is um, there is a there is a, a high risk where students get into the area of criminality and and university leadership may feel justified to bring in the police. But I always believe that there is only one solution to any disagreement, whether it is violent or not, and that solution is talking. And I have not, I must confess for the life of me, I have not seen that coming through in a much more stronger way from our university leadership. I believe the issue of talking and, and finding solutions. I haven't seen it uh, coming as strong. Let, let me put it this way. I haven't seen the issue of talking uh, coming as strong as the issue of violence because it, it needs to be at that level. We can't get tired of talking to each other. We must continue to talk. And the time to talk is when universities are burning. When sure. universities are burning, that's the time we need to find each other and talk. Because calling the police, yes, is a reprieve, but is a temporary reprieve that in some cases in some cases can lead to unintended consequences. No one knew that when the police were called in Marikana, within a short space of time, 34 people would be dead. Now, calling the police to a university is a big decision. It's a huge decision because students are young people. They can do something that can provoke the police to use their guns and kill so many people, which was not what was intended when the police were called. Sure. So, I mean, I I do understand that the vast majority of students are, are wanting to engage in peaceful protest, but it might be disruptive. It might cause other students who aren't appreciating of the gravity of these issues to um, feel 
done in because they can't go to class or their exams are delayed or, or things are disrupted. Uh, lecturers and staff might feel vulnerable. So it certainly is a volatile environment when even peaceful protest takes place. Um, so then if council should only call in police in an extreme situation, what should they do? Um, I mean, I, I don't think peaceful protest is peaceful if it is, if it is denying others their choice. Because there is something called freedom of choice within a constitutional state. And I believe South Africa is a constitutional state. If someone doesn't want to join the protest for whatever reason, to, to deny them the right to do what they choose to do is not peaceful. A peaceful pro protest is to protest and allow others who don't want to join your protest space and allow yourselves um, an opportunity to convince them otherwise to join your protest. But you can't say you're convincing them to join your protest if you um, are trying to obstruct them from um, doing what they choose to do. I believe in that case where there is a peaceful protest, definitely um, the university, I would guess, should engage the students and even bring in an external mediator to, to, to assist them. Because this is not an easy thing to do. Students and, and, and university management have, have a lot of mistrust between them because they have dealt with each other over many other things. Some students might have a, a, an axe to grind with a particular um, lecturer or leader in the university for whatever reason. Right. And this can, can influence how the discussions happen within them. Hence, it is important on very important issues like these. A third party intervention is sourced as early as possible. Doesn't mean that people can't uh, deal with their issues, but it means that this is a very important thing, which if, if we miss each other, the price is too high to pay. Tremendous. I believe you're going to be giving a presentation at the, the PwC conference coming up soon. What are you talking about? Well, um, at the Higher Education Conference at PwC on the 5th and 6th of, um, of September, um, the part of the session is, is trying to also relook at the issue of the fees must fall free education and the response of the universities and leadership and private sector. Um, so it's a total look at the fees must fall and the response of the nation to that. Is that open to the public? Are students allowed to attend that conference? Yes, I think they are. I think they are. The conference is at, uh, at the in, in International Convention Centre in Cape Town. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Bikwani. We really appreciate this. I think a lot of wisdom. We appreciate your heart, your vision for free education for the poor. And that's our prayer, is that we can, we can uh, facilitate the right dialogue and the right working together so we can achieve those, those noble visions um, in the near future. And, and while we wait for those things to be in place, um, that we can exercise patience and we can build trust to get there together. So thank you very, very much. Uh, thank you, I mean, I, I'm hoping that uh, the universities and, uh, and, and its students would find each other and we won't see what we s we've seen last year. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.